Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about neutropenia and febrile neutropenia, one of the most common problem in emergency room in oncology wards. We all know that our uh, from our blood stem cells, from stem cells, uh, uh, the uh, uh, RBC, WBC, platelets, all will be produced. In that WBC, the main function of WBC cells are to protect our body from the infection, inflammation, all these things. Actually, they produce inflammation against uh, an organism. Inflammation means they try to kill the organism which is entering to our body. And thus, they protect our body from infections. So, when their counts are very low, actually, we are prone to develop all sorts of infection. This is sometimes called as opportunistic infection. Opportunistic infection means these organisms, these bacteria, virus, fungus, all are normal human, in normal human being, they may not uh, produce any illness. But when our immunity is very, very low, they can produce various types of infections and other problems. This is called as opportunistic infection. So, somebody is having very low number of WBC due to various reasons. It can be bone marrow production defect, it can be due to some drugs, it can be due to infiltration of bone marrow by malignancy, sarcoidosis, tuberculosis, whatever it is. So, that time our cells will be, neutrophil cells will be very low and it can produce some sort of uh, like immune deficiency state and we can develop all types of infection. Neutropenia can be produced because of three major mechanisms. One is low neutrophil production that is uh, in bone marrow the production is reduced. It can be due to drugs, it can be due to infections like TB or some other uh, major infection, nutritional deficiencies like B12, folic acid, all these things. Redistribution of circulating neutrophils to the vascular endothelium and marginalization uh, uh, to the spleen. That means they are destructed in the uh, vascular compartment. It can be either inside the blood vessel or outside the blood vessel, uh, example, spleen. So, whenever there is a splenomegaly, you can see many patients can have actually neutropenia. Immune destruction, it can be due to autoimmune diseases. There are a lot of uh, different type of autoimmune diseases where platelet can be low, uh, WBCs can be low or RBCs can be low. So, there are some uh, autoimmune diseases where all cells will be destroyed in the peripheral circulation due to immune mediated destruction. Some drugs also can produce immune mediated reaction and they destroy the uh, neutrophils or any other cells. Neutropenia is basically categorized depending on the number absolute neutrophil count that can be calculated from your uh, uh, regular WBC count or automated machines this will be picking up in the machine itself or calculated by the machine itself. Mild, moderate, severe. Mild is ab absolute neutrophil count more than 1000 to less than 1500. Moderate is uh, more than 500 to less than 1000. Severe is less than 500. Egg granular cytosis is absolute neutrophil count less than 200. So, these are the categories of neutropenia or classification of neutropenia according to their cell numbers. Acquired neutropenia can be seen in various conditions. One of the most common condition is infection in the tuberculosis is very, very common in our country. So, uh, sometimes they are called as uh, myelothysis, anemia, all these things. That is because of the destruction of bone marrow by these infectious agents like TB, typhoid, brucella, measles, infectious mononucleosis, viral hepatitis, leishmaniasis, viral fevers, AIDS. Most of the viral fevers, what we uh, see in our practice, they can have some amount of neutropenia, not severe. Their count may be around 3000, 2000, in that range, not very severe. But there are some infections like TB and later a part of typhoid or uh, uh, infectious mononucleosis, all these things you can get severe neutropenia. AIDS also can produce severe neutropenia. Drug induced, various type of drugs can produce neutropenia that we will see afterwards. Neutropenia associated with autoimmune diseases like SLE, rheumatoid arthritis and tumor invasion of, uh, invasion of tub uh, tumor cells into the bone marrow, myelofibrosis, all these things. Then nutritional deficiency mainly B12 and folic acid, especially in alcoholic patients. 
benign familial neutropenia can sometimes occur in family chronic benign neutropenia of childhood chronic idiopathic neutropenia neutropenia associated with metabolic diseases neutropenia due to increased marginalization like splen splenomegaly we have seen in the previous slides metabolic diseases one of the common metabolic disease uh, there are a lot of metabolic diseases which can produce neutropenia but in our clinical practice uh, hypothyroidism is one of the common endocrine it is actually not metabolic disease it's an endocrine disorder uh, it can come under metabolic disease also so there you can get neutropenia and many other conditions also produce neutropenia but since they are rare conditions i am not good discussing all these things now drugs like penicillamine naproxen there is an nsi chloroquine methotrexate carbamazole propyl thioracil they are antithyroid drugs phenytoin sodium valproate carbamazepin uh, all anti epileptic drug epileptic drugs captopril enlapril nifedipine anti hypertensive drugs penicillin penicillin cephalosporin sulfadoxin pyrimethamin dapsone sidovudin all are anti microbials so all these things can also produce neutropenia one of the important drug you should remember is methotrexate we always give poly this is one of the common presentation in emergency room this will be always given along with folic acid this drug but many patients since it is a small tablet many patients miss this tablet and they come back with uh, severe neutropenia all this uh, phenytoin sodium valproate since they are taking long term they also come with uh, neutropenia all other drugs are not very common but they also can produce neutropenia cyclical neutropenia and uh, other conditions they are called as intrinsic defects uh, which can produce uh, genetical disorders and that can produce neutropenia clinically significant neutrophil neutrophil counts are more than uh, uh, 1500 normal uh, 1000 to uh, 1500 less chances of infection 500 to 1000 possibility of infection is there less than 500 there is a high chance of infection less than 200 what you should remember is that is very important so normally when we have an infection for example we are we are infected with a virus like respiratory virus we have some reaction like sore throat uh, congestion nasal congestion all these these all are inflammatory signs they try that that inflammation is to kill the virus or to kill the bacteria but here if the counts are very less the bacteria will grow or virus will grow like that so virus will grow numbers will increase normally inflammation starts here and try to contain the virus but here nothing is there to produce inflammation so the virus number will increase but patient may not notice the infection suddenly they come with severe sepsis to the emergency room with hypotension shock all these things so inflammatory signs are absent in neutrophil uh, absolute neutropenia no neutropenia uh this is a flow chart you should follow in emergency room that we'll see afterwards but uh, this will tell you how to diagnose uh, neutropenic cases but uh, remember one thing if a patient is having neutropenia it is important to diagnose but it is more important to treat the patient in emergency room but there are few things we should remember one is bone marrow biopsy is required okay so if if you require bone marrow biopsy if you start treating the patient first itself if you don't know what is the cause for the neutropenia then it can mask your diagnosis mask the reason for the neutropenia so it is always better suppose you are not uh, sure about the diagnosis it is always better to go for the bone marrow study and start the treatment and uh, uh, if you are not planning for bone marrow biopsy it is better to treat all patients with b12 and folic acid in emergency room itself because that is one of the most common problem in our country especially in vegetarian diet many patients come with uh, severe anemia neutropenia thrombocytopenia only because of b12 deficiency but if you know the reason then you have to treat the patient to prevent infection or the infection should be treated but it is always better to get a bone marrow biopsy to make a complete diagnosis of 
neutropenia. So gold standard of investigation is always bone marrow biopsy. Now bone marrow study, that's a gold standard investigation, bone marrow biopsy and uh, specimen should be examined for various pathologies. Uh, uh, so that should be done before giving any drug. If you start giving some drug like bone marrow stimulants or B12, folic acid, all the study uh, like uh, the pattern will be masked by your treatment. So it is always better to do the bone marrow and start the treatment. If you know the reason for bone marrow suppression like somebody is on methotrexate and he is not taking folic acid, you can give uh, folinic acid and B12 folic acid all these things along with the folinic acid that is an active form of the folic acid. So, if you know the uh, cause for B12, sorry bone marrow suppression then treat it. If you do not know better to go, better go for bone marrow study and then treat the patient. Now, there is a risk assessment score for uh, bone marrow, uh, sorry bone marrow suppression whether they can go to febrile neutropenia or not. So, you can read about this uh, risk assessment scoring, I am not going to the details of this uh, risk as assessment score. Okay, so that scoring system you can read. But uh, in clinical practice it is not very useful because most of the patient come with uh, acute uh, onset of infection and you have to treat the patient. But here it will tell whether the patient is having risk factor for infection or not. So low risk, high risk all these things are uh, explained in this chart. Now how do you manage uh, bone marrow suppression and possibility of infection? So oral hygiene is most important because uh, most of the uh, 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 bacteria which is present in the oral cavity, they can produce different types of infection in the oral cavity, uh, throat or lungs, it can produce various infections. So, rigorous oral hygiene is always important. To prevent infection according to recent guidelines, all patients who is on uh, bone marrow suppression drugs or uh, chronic uh, immunosuppression like steroids or any other drugs which can reduce the immunity it is always better to go for PCP prophylaxis. So, PCP prophylaxis is trimethoprim and sulfa methoxazole. So, these two drugs previous guidelines it was not there now it is very important that you have to give prophylaxis to prevent PCP pneumonia in all patients who is having immunosuppression due to any reason. Then during fever we have to cover one two important organism one is pseudomonas other one is MRSA. Pseudomonas you know that pseudomonas cannot be treated by your routine antibiotics. So, you have to either give septicidium that is a drug which can be used to prevent the pseudomonas infection. Piperacinate asabactam is another drug which can be used to treat the bacteria. MRSA should be covered with vancomycin. So, that is mainly uh, it can cover uh, uh, MRSA can be covered with vancomycin, linazolid and various other drugs. So basically you whenever somebody come with uh, neutropenic sepsis, piperacillin tazobactam or meropenum with vancomycin or linazolid will cover most of the spectrum and most of these patients may require Bactrim DS prophylaxis. Bactrim DS is trimethoprim and sulfamethoxazole for PCP prophylaxis. Now colony stimulating factors are another important drug that should be given in a patient who is having drug induced neutropenia. We can use colony stimulating factor in various types of bone marrow suppression, but these drugs are really indicated in drug induced neutropenia. Like uh, somebody is having methotrexate induced bone marrow suppression, you can give folinic acid actually folic acid deficiency can occur there, but to stimulate bone marrow you have to give colony stimulating factor. Now colony stimulating factor or granulocyte colony stimulating factor that is filgrastim that should be given in the uh, during the treatment you can give um, uh, colony stimulating factor till the bone marrow uh, gets stimulated and count become more than 10,000. So, till then you will have to give. So, these drugs are mainly used in bone marrow suppression produced by drugs. So, that is very important. 
So cancer patients uh, receiving bone marrow transplant, the recommended dose of filgrastim after bone marrow treatment is 10 microgram per kg per day in, as an infusion. So that is a different issue. Here we are, uh, we are stimulating the bone marrow after the uh, complete shutdown of uh, marrow production uh, before the transplant or after transplant to simulate bone marrow we are using. Now febrile neutropenia we already explained that we are uh, thinking uh, two important organisms one is uh, uh, MRSA other one is pseudomonas. So two organisms we should think and we should cover these two organisms piperacillin tazobactam or meropenem that is a carbapenem means meropenem or ertapenem or uh, 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 some other penems uh, or cepipem tazobactam these, are, these drugs also can be used. Vancomycin linosolid can be used in pneumonia or cellulitis to prevent the, uh, uh, prevent the uh, MRSA part. If it is a pseudomonas infection or suspected pseudomonas infection it is always uh, better to add one more drug that can be aminoglycoside uh, to carbapenem regime. So we have discussed about one of the important topic in emergency room that is bone marrow suppression and pneumonia. It is secondary to ma mainly what we treat uh, is bone marrow suppression is due to cancer therapy. But there are lot of other conditions also can produce bone marrow suppression. And bone marrow suppression can lead to uh, febrile neutropenia. That is a dangerous condition. Patient can have fever, can develop fever because of uh, uh, neutropenic sepsis. But remember when the patient with neutropenic sepsis the inflammatory signs will be very very minimal like you may not see like other patient like toxic features may not be there suddenly patient will uh, develop hypotension shock mild fever they may not even have high degree fever they may have mild fever hypotension shock all these things are feature of febrile neutropenia don't think that all febrile neutropenia patient come with high degree fever that if uh, counts are uh, average then it, they can have good uh, good uh, like uh, in, in inflammatory response and they can have some fever but otherwise uh, high degree fevers cannot be there so we have discussed about neutropenia febrile neutropenia how to manage these conditions in emergency room thank you